We're in a new chapter, chapter 8, about right triangles, and we're going to do a little trigonometry. This is similarity in right triangles, 8.1. In a right triangle, an altitude drawn from the vertex of the right triangle to the hypotenuse forms two right triangles. We can use similarity relationships to relate the length of the altitude to the product of the segment lengths. So I have a theorem for you, and it doesn't have a name, but it's numbered. It's 8.1.1. The altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle forms two triangles that are similar to each other and to the original triangle. I have a paragraph proof of that theorem. It says, given that triangle ABC is a right triangle with altitude CD, we need to prove that ABC is similar to ACD, which is similar to CBD. And our paragraph proof says the right triangles in triangle ABC, ACD, and CBD are all congruent. And by the reflexive property of congruence, angle A is congruent to angle A. The angle A in the big triangle is congruent to the angle A in this triangle right here. Therefore, triangle ABC is similar to triangle ACD. By the AA similarity theorem, we have an angle here. That's the angle-angle similarity theorem. We have an angle here, and they both have right angles, so that's angle-angle similarity. And similarly, angle B is congruent to angle B. So the angle B in the big triangle is congruent to the angle B in this little triangle. So triangle ABC is similar to triangle CBD. And by the transitive property of similarity, we did that in video 7.3b, triangle ABC is similar to triangle ACD and similar to triangle CBD, okay? And we can identify similar right triangles and write a similarity statement comparing the three triangles. So this one triangle, because of this altitude, is three triangles. We draw three right triangles with their angles in corresponding positions to this one. So we have our big original one, RST, is going to be similar to this triangle, which is this one here, triangle SPT, which is going to be similar to this little triangle, which is this one here, triangle RPS. Okay? Now consider the proportion A over X is equal to X over B. In this case, the means of the proportion are the same number, and the number is the geometric mean of the extremes. So this is the means, this is the extremes, okay? And I don't know if you remember from Algebra 1, but the product of the means equals the product of the extremes. If we had 1 third over 3 ninths, well, 3 times 3, the product of the means, is 9. And 1 times 9, the product of the extremes, is 9. So the product of the means equals the product of the extremes, okay? The means are on the inside, the extremes are on the outside, all right? So we can find the geometric mean of a pair of numbers. And if necessary, we can give our answer in simplest radical form. So we know that the geometric mean of two positive numbers is the positive square root of their product. So the geometric mean of A and B is the positive number X, such that X is equal to the square of A and B, or X squared equals A times B. So we can do 4 and 9 for our A and B, and let X be the geometric mean we'll have x squared equals 4 times 9. See? That's 36. That's the definition of geometric mean. That, then we can take this little two exponent off and put a radical sign around the 36 and find the positive square root because remember, lengths can only be positive. We can't have a negative square to be a length, okay? We can't have the negative root, so it can't be negative 6. So x is equal to 6. And for the pair 6 and 15, we do the x squared is equal to 6 times 15, which is equal to 90, and we get x is equal to the square of 90. We find the positive square root, and it equals 3 square root of 10. Okay? And we can use theorem 8.1.1 to write proportions comparing the side lengths of the triangles formed by the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So, Try to look at this with me as, we, as I read the bottom ones, okay? It says B over A is equal to Y over H is equal to H over X. 
So in our big triangle here, because of this altitude, we had another triangle and another triangle. And I flipped them around and made them here. And they're all similar to each other. Now follow this. C, which is the whole hypotenuse here, over A, this side, is equal to B over H, which is equal to A over X. See, they're all corresponding sides. And we've got C over B is equal to B over Y is equal to A over H. Okay? Here's the geometric means corollaries. We've got two of them. 8.1.2 says the length of the altitude to the hypotenuse of the right triangle is the geometric mean of the lengths of the two segments of the hypotenuse. What that means is h squared is equal to x times y. And 8.1.3 says the length of a leg of a right triangle is the geometric mean of the length of the hypotenuse and the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to that leg. So that means a squared is equal to x times c and b squared is equal to y times c, okay? So we're going to use these right now, all right? So we can find x, b, and a. So here we've got our triangle, and I wrote a little x here and a little y here to help us, and this whole side is c, remember? And we have our a and our b. But it's telling us that x is a 2 and y is a 10. So we can write x squared is equal to 2 times 10 because that h squared was equal to x times y. So we do 2 times 10. That's a 20. So we remove the exponent by putting a radical sign around the 20, and we get x is equal to 2 square root of 5, finding the positive root. We do b squared is equal to the y, this 10, times the entire thing c. So we're going to have 12 times 10. That's 120. We can remove the exponent, put a radical around it, and we get b is equal to 2 square root of 30. Now we do the a squared is equal to the 12 times the 2. That's 24. And we get a is equal to the square root of 24, so a is equal to 2 square root of 6. Okay? And to estimate the height of a statue, so pretend this green bar is a statue. Bob steps away from the statue until his line of sight to the bottom of the statue forms a 90 degree angle right here. Here's his orange eyesight, eye line, okay? His eyes are five feet above the ground, and he's standing 15 feet, three inches from the statue. So how tall is the statue to the nearest foot? So we're going to let this X right here be the height of the statue above his eye level, and he's 15 feet, three inches away, so we're going to turn that into a decimal. So it's 15.25 because 0.25 is 3 inches to a foot, okay? That means if we're going to do this as squaring it, we've got 15.25 times 15.25, which is 232.5625, and it's going to equal 5x, 5 times x. So we can divide both sides by the 5, and we get approximately 47 when we round it to the nearest foot like they want us to. But we're not done. That's not the height of the statue. So we've got x here is the 47, but we also have to do this 5 feet below his eyesight. So that's 52 feet for the height of the statue, okay? When the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle is drawn, these relationships are true. We've got this triangle with an altitude CD. So triangle ABC, the whole thing, is similar to this one ACD, which is similar to this one CBD. And CD, the altitude, is equal to BD times AD. And BC, this leg squared, is equal to BD times AB. And AC, this leg squared, is equal to AD times AB. Okay? So be careful, the geometric mean of two numbers is always smaller than the arithmetic mean. The arithmetic mean is the average. If you add 2 plus 4 
that's a 6. You added two numbers together, so you divide the 6 by 2 and the average is a 3. That's an arithmetic mean. A geometric mean is a positive square root of two positive numbers. Okay, very different. And it's always smaller than the arithmetic mean. Our next lesson is trigonomic ratios, and it's going to be followed by the rest of the lesson of trigonomic ratios and complementary angles and inverse functions before we move on to 8.3. Okay? So I know this was a lot of information to take in. If you can understand this part right here, you'll be okay. So if you were able to write that down, that was probably a good idea. Okay? So I hope you're doing well, and I'll see you next time. Bye!